A very warm welcome to another episode of Arms of Dotor. This is a series brought to you by Prime TV Goa, where we interview medical professionals and provide medical information to all our audiences sitting at home. In this episode, we are going to be talking about dermatology. And without wasting any more time, let's give a warm welcome to our guest for the evening, Dr. Amrutha Dinkar. Doctor, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here today. Dr. Amrutha Dinkar is a consultant dermatologist and cosmetologist practicing for the last seven years at Vision Hospital in Mavsa and also at Arji Hospital in Pororim. We are grateful to have her here with us in the studio today, giving valuable information to our audiences sitting at home. Without wasting any more time, let's dive right into the questions. So, Doctor, before we get into the medical part of things, we'd love to know, our audiences actually would love to know what drove you towards getting a career or pursuing a career in dermatology. Okay, so what a lot of people may not know is actually skin is the largest organ of the body and because it is the largest organ, a lot of diseases manifest on the skin first. So being a dermatologist allows you to deal with a different variety of conditions, you know, not only cosmetic but also systemic diseases would manifest on the skin in different ways and we are treating pediatric patients, we are treating children, we are treating young people as well as the elderly. So it really gives you a very um, rich a uh, variety of experience and I think that is what drew me to dermatology. Thank you doctor. Is there an area of specialization that you pursued in dermatology? I have a keen interest actually in uh, hair fall and acne. This is something that I encounter in my practice a lot and uh, they are very common problems in Goa at least where we are located given the humid weather there is a lot of acne as well so this is something of keen interest and I also have uh, done a lot of work in allergies. So doctor you told us a little bit about uh, what exactly it is that a dermatologist does. You said you deal with or rather you are passionate about dealing with a lot of uh, skin related and health related issues. What according to you is healthy skin? So healthy skin actually Weber is a this is a very broad term and it is uh, it's really a journey I wouldn't say it's a goal nobody can have completely healthy skin and uh, it's it's a process but essentially healthy skin would be one which is free of skin diseases and you know more than healthy skin I think one should focus on a healthy body and a healthy mind which would reflect then on the skin basically inner beauty shows. What are some habits that can be detrimental then to healthy skin? Okay, so in, in the kind of life that we live at the moment, in the fast paced life that we live, the first thing that would impact you is what you put inside and what is coming in, you know, in contact with your skin outside. So it's your internal environment and your external environment. So the kind of food that you eat. So right now we, we have, you know, I mean, uh, the delivery uh, apps that are there for food, while they're doing their own bit of good, they're also doing a bit of negative. There's so much of outside food that we eat, processed foods, uh, oil rich foods. So these are things that we need to cut down on. Refined sugars, they impact your skin in a bad way. They promote aging. They're also promoting uh, diseases, autoimmune diseases like psoriasis or even diseases like acne. So that is something to think about. The pollution and the, the polluted environment that we are in uh, on a daily basis, this also impacts you know your skin health. Sun exposure impacts your skin health. I mean, the list is endless, but I think these are the top things that would. So it's not just about what goes on inside. It's also equally uh, what goes on outside. Absolutely. And you'd be surprised. It's also a lot about what goes on in the mind. You'd be surprised. So many skin diseases are definitely impacted by stress or have a direct, you know, they, they are called psychosomatic diseases also and they, there are diseases that would manifest on the skin in moments of stress. So doctor you spoke about how food actually impacts our skin health. So are yeah. there any good foods that you would recommend that would promote good skin health? Yeah absolutely. So uh, I would say stick to healthy home cooked food. Okay. Uh, for people that have acne or people that have uh, you know uh, certain again autoimmune diseases having less processed foods, having raw foods, a good amount of vegetables and fruits in your diet and I always say seasonal variations you know so if, if it's mango season for sure you could go and have a few mangoes if it's going to be say winters then make sure you have your berries you're going to get your antioxidants through berries make sure you have a good amount of vitamin c in your diet vitamin c has a very important role to play in healthy skin make sure to have dry fruits have your you know beetroot dates have a very important role to play in hair fall control and hair regrowth so i, I would say that it's it's not one fixed rule moderate and moderation we all like to have a bit of fun so you know the occasional outing and a bit of even junk once in a way is tolerable it is not a bad thing but try and have a good amount of home cooked healthy food good amount of fruit vegetables and hydrate well make sure you drink enough of water every day so doctor you spoke quite a bit about how seasonal foods should be preferred yes we live in a very temperate uh, location here in goa it's quite hot yes. for most parts of the year except right. for maybe a few months of monsoon it's pretty uh, it's pretty humid yeah. yeah it's humid yeah 
So are there any skin conditions that arise because of the kind of weather that we are exposed to? Yeah, this is a very interesting question that you asked and uh, in fact if you maybe had the same conversation with a dermatologist in Delhi, you would probably get a very different answer. Yeah. The humid weather promotes fungal infections. I would tell you, you'd be surprised, a large part of the job that I do is not as glamorous as it sounds. We have a good, uh, you know, OPD load of uh, fungal infections on a daily basis. I would say a good 20 to 25 percent of the work I do on a daily basis is actually fungal infections because of the moist, humid, warm environment where, you know, fungal infections thrive. And these are contagious, so they spread from a person to another. So that is something that I see frequently. Acne, I see a lot of you know, because of the humidity again and one tends to sweat the, you know, especially with oily skin types. I do see a lot of hair fall as well and I feel this has a lot to do with diet and lifestyle. So, I think this, these are the top common things I see. Okay. So, doctor, you said that quite a lot of your patients seem to come with the same issue. Uh, do you actually create customized skincare routines for them or is it one size fits all kind of a deal? It's definitely not one size fits all. Um, and again, uh, to be very honest, I am not uh, I won't say that I'm entirely, completely on board with the skincare routine bandwagon. So the skincare routine concept that has come in in the last couple of years has led you know people to generally think that they can fix you know skin issues or skin diseases, skin problems by following a certain routine, which is incorrect. If there is a skin disease like acne, it needs treatment. A skin routine may not fix it. So skin routine is a great idea for maintaining healthy skin. And yes, I do individualize it. I, I don't, uh, it's definitely not one size fits all. And maybe for someone with acne, one would include, say, salicylic acid or say for, you know, somebody who's looking for an anti-aging skincare routine, I would definitely include retinol. But it, it varies from patient to patient. Doctor, what are some of the common misconceptions about skincare that you hear around your patients? Okay, vitamin C. Let's start with that. I, I have a lot of people who are big fans of vitamin C and you know they are they are patients of acne who are using vitamin C which is a mistake and they think that you know doing themselves a service by using vitamin C while well, vitamin C is not to be used in acne prone skin it tends to worsen acne so that's the first thing the second thing is this concept of layering everybody wants to put four five six different products on the skin and again they think they're doing themselves a favor which they are not in fact in the kind of weather we are in Goa the less product you use the better off you are but people are putting on maybe you know, first they are washing their face, which is good. Then they have uh, a toner and then they have a mist and then they have a moisturizer and then they have a serum and then they have another product. And then finally, after seven or eight layers, they have a sunscreen. So this kind of, uh, you know, overdoing it is not good. Less is more. So I think, yeah, these two things are what stand out. That is quite insightful, doctor. I'm pretty sure a lot of our uh, viewers at home do go through this phase where they feel compelled to, you know, use a lot of makeup because pop culture promotes using a lot of... Absolutely. In fact, I just wanted to add to that, uh, Vibhav, actually. Uh, so one more thing that ends up happening with overuse of these products is damage to the skin barrier. So your skin is actually a barrier that prevents entrance of, you know, different germs or organisms into the skin. But when you use so many different chemicals and they may not be logical combinations they may be using actives like salicylic acid retinol vitamin c all together it actually damages the skin it makes you age faster it causes breakouts and then they end up coming to the clinic you know doctor i've used all the right products what's what has happened wrong so i i would encourage before anybody gets on a skincare routine meet a professional have it designed out for yourself i think that's what happens with a lot of your patients doctor a lot of them tend to self-diagnose just by going online and just looking for all sorts of information online they tend to self-diagnose what disease they think they might have so I think uh, a general point of advice for all our audiences would be do visit your dermatologist and get rectified from a professional doctor. Don't please avoid self-diagnosing any kind of disease by yourself. Doctor, since we're talking about uh, mostly about Goan patients and the kind of common diseases that skin diseases that you'll see in Goa, are there any factors that one should consider while choosing a sunscreen in Goa? I'm very happy you asked that question. So, uh, a lot of my patients that come to me are actually patients with a combination to an oily skin type or they have acne prone skin and in go and weather even normal skin I would recommend my patients to go in for a matte finish sunscreen okay and not to go for a you know a greasier and oilier base so this is something which is always mentioned on the sunscreen the kind of base it is in and you could choose accordingly generally if you're someone who's very outdoorsy and you know out and about a lot it helps to go for a, a better sun protection factor now this is a point I want to highlight a higher SPF need not necessarily mean that the sunscreen is better for you. 
okay so spf actually protects against ultraviolet b and the pa factor there's something called a pa factor which is written ahead of the spf that is what indicates the level of protection that the sunscreen affords you against ultraviolet a so it's not just the spf that's important but you also need to look at the pa value with whether it's triple plus or you know two plus or three plus that is something to consider now someone who is in front of the computer screen an spf of 30 is more than enough but now you need to be looking for something which has uh, you know like these uh, there's iron oxide which is added to sunscreens which also filters out blue light now this is very important in someone who's sitting in front of the screen while someone who's you know more outdoors might want to choose a longer lasting sunscreen someone who's you know into sports and or swimming then you would want to choose a, a water resistant sunscreen so i would say look at your requirement look at your need uh, the level of sun exposure you have on a daily basis and then go about choosing or take a recommendation from a doctor and if you're outdoors for the entire day, make sure you reapply your sunscreen every three hours at least. So it's not just about the sunlight, doctor. Then you said even blue light from a digital screen could also affect skin health. Absolutely. And it does impact aging as well. I don't think a lot of people are aware about this aspect. Yes, yes. This is something that, uh, yeah, I think one just tends to assume that it's only sunlight that has an impact. So, doctor, we spoke a little bit about hair fall being a very common issue in a place like Goa. Are there any precursors to this? Are there any causes that are restricted just to Goa that have increased the number of hair fall or people affected by hair fall in Goa? I, I would say that it is not just a Goa limited problem if I'm being honest and I feel it is really a nationwide or even a global problem really hair fall. There are different types of hair fall. So uh, there's genetic hair fall like male pattern baldness or female pattern hair loss which is genetic you know it's something that you would inherit a pattern of hair loss that you would inherit from your parents and it would be a chronic long-term hair fall that would require treatment over a long period of time and you know the patient would need to continue it okay and then you have short periods of hair fall like telogen effluvium which is post uh, say maybe pregnancy for a person or post covid we saw a lot of post covid hair fall as well so uh, there are different types of hair fall then you have alopecia areata which is an autoimmune problem so i won't say that Hair fall particularly is unique only to Goa. Hard water does impact hair fall, but in Goa we have generally very good quality water everywhere. So I, I wouldn't say it's that lifestyle again comes down to that. That's another factor. How much of it is related to diet, doctor? Oh, in a big way, in a big way. Look, genetics you cannot control. Yeah. But your environment and what you do with your body, you can control, right? So diet has a big part. What happens? Typically with the Indian diet is it tends to be carbohydrate rich, you know, if you compare it with the European diet, which is quite uh, protein rich, we tend to be a little bit deficient in our protein intake. So I encourage my patients to have a good amount of protein if they are dealing with hair fall. And even those that are not, it's good to have at least one gram per kg of body weight of protein on a daily basis. Uh, and make sure you alter your sources of protein, make sure you vary between your sources of protein, you know, don't have the same kind of protein every day, don't just get your protein only from eggs. That's one. Uh, again, a very, you know, uh, a high consumption of alcohol or, you know, even smoking does impact hair, but a good healthy diet rich in dry fruits, green leafy vegetables would promote healthy hair. So, Dr. you highlighted that two main reasons for hair fall is one, genetic, and the second one is your diet. How important is physical movement uh, important for, you know, maintaining good hair? I feel it really comes in, you know, in part with the package, Vibha. We, we are looking at uh, lifestyle as a whole. Yeah. We're looking at diet, we're looking at, you know, good uh, exercise, whether it is cardio or weight training or, you know, some kind of a physical movement promotes blood circulation for sure. There are now, uh, I'm not uh, uh, an Ayurvedic practitioner, but I know that there are uh, certain asanas in uh, Ayurveda and yoga actually, which promote hair regrowth. So I, I feel it really is a complete package deal. I won't say, it would be incorrect to say that it is only a lack of physical exercise that would cause hair fall, but definitely having great physical exercise on a daily basis would promote healthy hair. What do you think are the psychological implications that one goes through when they have some or the other kind of skin or health disease? This is again very interesting, you know, that you should ask this. Uh, your skin and, you know, maybe a skin disease would impact someone's mental health and mental health would again impact skin disease. That's, that's where it's very interesting. Uh, look, someone who has maybe you know like a lung problem or a stomach problem of course they are suffering but you don't see it what happens with skin and hair is it's very visible you look at yourself every day you have people commenting on you on how you look so there definitely is a very big uh, there is definitely a huge impact there's there's a lot of uh, burden 
in terms of uh, psychological impact in in these conditions someone who has acne is not you know it would definitely take a toll on their self confidence it would take a toll on how they present themselves to the world or how they perceive themselves to be now this should not happen we all need to remember that beauty is really from the inside and it's of course easier said than done i'm sitting here i'm telling you things about how one has to feel good but then that's the thing that how one looks definitely impacts and uh, people that have say conditions like psoriasis or vitiligo which are not at all life threatening which have basically no should not have any impact on you know the health of a person but then the visual impact of it does does take a toll on on their mind and i feel that a better acceptance of these uh, diseases a better awareness of the di of these diseases so that society does not you know uh, ostracize. Uh, ostracize them or you know have a certain perception or a view about them these are not even contagious conditions so there is no need to you know uh, uh, treat someone with these conditions especially like vitiligo uh, there is no need to treat these people differently but i th i think a better awareness would help them feel better and it would help us accept them as a society better as well i agree doctor i think a lot of this has to do with pop media also about how the glamour industry you know tends to ostracize like we said uh, you know a lot of people with skin hair skin health or uh, you know even hair health a lot of them tend to be sh uh, shunned upon so i think uh, the Bolly bollywood industry for example has a lot to a lot to do with creating that image that you know if you have good hair only then you are good looking so i think uh, the media also has a lot definitely but but also i want to add to that in, in the current time that we are in now there's a lot of body positivity and there's a lot of uh, i think awareness about this and people are a lot more uh, accepting they are a lot more forthcoming and i i think this is a good time where i think this is where the change will come about definitely doctor definitely doctor you've spoken quite a lot about your own patients you've spoken about general uh, in general also you've spoken a lot about hair health what was one of the most rewarding cases that you've dealt with as in your career as a dermatologist okay so this this was uh, a recent case actually and it is not anything to do with hair or uh, you know acne or you know even fungal infections which are my common uh, conditions that i see in my opd but i i had a german lady who came in and uh, she had been bitten by a jellyfish which we found out later was actually the portuguese man of war which is not your regular garden variety jellyfish and uh, we of course admitted her and we you know the, the the treatment went forward but what a lot of people don't know about the portuguese man of war is the toxin that it releases causes something called vasoconstriction so vasoconstriction means your blood vessels start closing up they start constricting and that means the blood supply say if you she had a sting on the arm the blood supply to the limb is cut off so that can lead to gangrene necrosis and it is actually a medical emergency so of all the jellyfish stings that i have seen in my career this was the first and hopefully last that i saw of the portuguese man of war she did require special treatment and uh, it it was a difficult to manage case we had on our team a surgeon a vascular surgeon myself a physician also and thankfully we were able to save her limb and the woman is doing well so i think this was one of the most uh, it was a very trying time for us also and for the patient as well but it it was a most rewarding and an, uh, really a memorable unforgettable case for me definitely i think it's very rewarding doctor like you said you can just tell that you know it must feel great to be able to you know heal somebody or to give back uh, life to somebody it must be just a whole different feeling you know it can't be put into words also i'm pretty sure doctor i think uh, we've come to the end of our session here today one last question that i have for you is a lot of people out there today tend to self diagnose a lot of skin or health related issues what advice do you have for people like this that tend to go online and just you know read up a bunch of different websites and tend to think that they do have they fit the symptoms for a particular disease what advice do you have for people like this okay so there is a, a gujarati saying that goes by uh, je no kaam te no thai okay so leave the diagnosing to the professionals okay let us not self diagnose there is a lot of google is a wealth of information i have nothing against google but it is so easy to misinterpret information it is so easy to over diagnose and incorrectly diagnose even us as medical professionals if we have a condition we would not diagnose ourselves you know we would go to our colleague and then get their opinion so we we spend 8 9 10 years studying medicine and then doing our post graduation you know and then further few years you know gaining experience and you know to help people out so please don't assume and you know think that it is so simple to just go online because most people will come and say doctor you know i have got this this is this cancer you know it's always the extreme thing with google please don't do that you know uh, give yourselves a break from that if you have a condition that needs attention meet a professional and take 
uh, you know a logical solution for the same thank you doctor for so much of the valuable information you've given here today uh, a little word of advice for all the patients that are watching or at least the viewers that are watching this from home i would say i would say love yourself really it's we are in a time where there is uh, you know with the media as you said there's so much of uh, pressure to look good to look a certain way but i really feel that the inner beauty and a healthy life lifestyle and good diet and you know if you're you're just happy from inside it really glows and it, it really shows and that is enough that is really enough so i i would say that is my take away message thank you doctor for so much of the valuable information you've given here today i hope our audience is sitting at home are learning something or the other from these episodes that we conduct just for you we'll be back with another episode shortly stay tuned to amso dotor my name is zubav naik signing out